There's lots to get to today, so I'm starting with this one, which was opened by Canada Border Services. I don't know what they thought they were going to find in here. It's just a few spools of wire. 24 gauge. Multi colors. And when shopping for this, I looked at all the options, including Amazon, but it looks like AliExpress was the cheapest at the time. It looks like this is some sort of reusable Velcro type wrapping on here. Maybe I'll hang on to these. This is apparently some kind of connector. And it is a PS2 keyboard to AT style keyboard. So working with old computers that have a 5-pin AT keyboard port, I only have one actual keyboard with this connector on it still. So I can take a PS2 keyboard, plug it in here, and then plug it into the AT motherboard, as long as this works when I go to try it. So there's my existing authentic AT style keyboard, and now I have this duplicate adapter. I can go take a PS2, plug that in, and soon enough I'll find out if this works on those old motherboards. This is electronic parts and components. Oh, they're loose. Looks like some kind of transistor FET, maybe? IRLB8721. This is a logic level power MOSFET. So the gate threshold voltage max is only two something volts to turn on the FET. Although it's better to turn it on maybe with five volts if you want more current, which would be what I would use these for being so large. When turning this on with five volts at the gate, you can get tens of amps through here continuous. So I I think I was just restocking these, and I ordered these a long time ago, so it was last year. I think it was just to have something beefy on hand in case I ever needed to turn on something of a large load, whether it's a motor or solenoid, drawing more than half an amp or something. And here's another package I ordered long ago last year. It's described as resistance, so I'm not sure exactly what is in it. Looks like I was just randomly purchasing some toggle switches. Panel mount. Single pull, double throw. So just in case I ever build something where I need, even temporarily, some sort of control switches. And this is an SOT223. So it's most likely an LDO. The standard 1117 regulator, this one's a fixed 3.3 volt. I also have some 5 volt ones coming, and I recently got some adjustable ones. And now I have several things, so I'm just going to open everything and then we'll look at it. A resistor network, so a bunch of resistors with a common terminal, a bunch of ICs and sockets including PLCC sockets I got on AliExpress, 28C64 E squared PROM, some other flash ROM, some ICs like Glue Logic 7400 series, capacitors, chip sockets, a 24 megahertz oscillator, some 0.1 inch headers, and this is where it all starts coming together. Here is a Computer AT style case back plate with a 9 pin D sub style serial port. Here is a couple of 16C550 UART chips. Another back plate with no cutout in case I have a card that is just internal connections only. And these are floppy disk controller ICs. So I'm obviously making a computer expansion card. And this is a floppy disk controller card capable of doing up to eight floppy drives on one card, plus optional serial port. And I did not design this. It's on GitHub. So 
what I did is take the Gerbers as is. I didn't edit them or anything. So whatever's on the silk screen is still there, including original author details. And I'm ordering these cards from PCB Way. So in anticipation of receiving those, between whatever parts I have in stock and AliExpress and Mauser, I was able to find all the parts, I think, that I need to make this card. So this is useful in older computers, especially my 286 motherboard that doesn't even have any onboard floppy disk controller. So thanks to channel supporters and Patreon supporters for helping fund all of these ongoing projects, especially more costly ones like these. Hopefully I get this working. Come back and see what happens.